I call the October 26, 2020 meeting of the Mexico City Council to order. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. William. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, approval of the October 12, 2020 regular session meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, resolutions reading by title only and passage. Bill number 2020-62, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Mexico Senior Nutrition Center to assist in providing services for senior citizens. Mr. Slater. Yes, Your Honor, this is our annual agreement with the Mexico Senior Center um, for uh, the services they provide to senior citizens. And to cover the details of the contract, uh, Roger Haynes. The 2020-21 budget allows for the City of Mexico to contribute to the Mexico Senior Nutrition Center the sum of $14,000 to assist in the offset of operational costs related to providing programs, activities, and nutritional lunch and services. The city has provided $14,000 annually in assistance to the Mexico Nutrition Center since fiscal year 2017 and provided prior assistance in the amount of $10,000 annually dating back to year 2000. I own Bickle, the administrator of the Mexico Senior Nutrition Center, who is unable to be here this evening, has provided a written outline as a progress report, utilization of services, and a thank you to City Council and the city for continued support. Staff recommends that the City of Mexico and the Mexico Senior, S Senior Nutrition Center enter into an agreement and that Council proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution. I make a motion to read bill number 2020-462. Second. Okay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shiver. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2020-62, the resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Mexico Senior Nutrition Center to assist in providing services for senior citizens. I move for second reading of bill number 2020-62. Second. Okay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2020-62, resolution on the right statement. That's just passage. That's passage. That's passage. Oh, that's passage. passage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just need one. Bill number 2020-63, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Help Center to offset operational costs related to providing services to citizens. Yes, Your Honor. Again, this is uh, an annual agreement, again, with the Help Center on this one. And this uh, help uh, does offset uh, some of their operational costs for the services that they provide to our citizens. And to cover the uh, details of the contract, Roger. Again, the 2020-21 budget allows for the City of Mexico to contribute to the Health Center a sum of $5,000 for the use in the offset of operational costs related to providing programs, activities, and services to citizens. The City provided assistance to the Health Center in 2004, 2009, 2010, and 2011 in the, in the amount of $5,000. In 2012, Council approved to increase the level of support to the Help Center to 10000 based on the need for additional assistance. Council approved the level of funding to return to 5000 back in 2017. Uh, Mr. Philip Eyman, the Executive Director of the Help Center, is here this evening. He has provided a program outline, um, a uh, notice of the number of people that served, and how they've addressed the COVID situation. And he would like to, an opportunity to address the Council. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to address the council. And I just want to express my appreciation on behalf of the board of directors, the help center, and every single person that we serve for your support and your partnership. It makes a huge difference in, in our ability to, to carry out the mission of service to others. So uh, I hope you all had a chance to read the uh, outline that I sent in, and I'd like to answer any questions if there is any. So. Okay, well, hearing now, <laughs> I appreciate you all very much. I just wanted to make sure that you know how much we appreciate you. So thank you. I move, 
I move to uh, for the first reading of bill or for a reading of bill number 2020-63. Second. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2020-63, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the help center to offset it operate, operational costs related to providing services to setting citizens. I move for passage. Second. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, bill number 2020-64, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce to assist in marketing activities for the city of Mexico. Mr. Slagle. Yes, Your Honor. Again, this is our annual agreement uh, with the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce uh, under the uh, marketing activities. And to cover the details, once again, Roger Haynes. <laughs> The attached resolution authorizes the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce to assist in marketing activities in the City of Mexico for the budget year 2020-2021. The City of, of Mexico would contribute to the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce the sum of $13,000 for use in the cost of marketing activities. Staff does recommend that the City of Mexico and the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce enter into an agreement to promote marketing activities and that Council proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution. Dana Keller, Executive Director of the Chamber, has provided an outline of the Chamber activities undertaken so far this year and plans for the remainder of the year. Uh, she asks the opportunity to address the Council and answer any questions that you may have. Good evening. I just wanted to say an extra thank you because I understand that we're all working under different budgets than anticipated and in different circumstances than we all anticipated. And um, I hope that we're doing a really good job for you guys. We continue to um, reach out and support businesses even through um, the, the alternate ways that they're doing business. Um, this year we were able to reach out to every single chamber member personally and then also additional businesses in the city and county um, just to check on them in, in regards to how things were going um, offer information about CARES funding um, another big part of our work was just the um, we started the Mighty Mexmo campaign, just, you know, ways to keep the community encouraged and try to reach out to other communities. And fortunately, um, as, you, as you know, our sales tax revenue is holding steady, and I think that people really appreciate what it means to support local now. And um, we've even had a lot of visitors from outside of the community that come to our small town because they feel like we're much more managed and safe to... Um, to be out and about so we just appreciate your support and thank you for your funding and for your support of the Chamber of Commerce. Do you have any questions? Bill 2020-64. Second. Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill 2020-64 resolution authorizing the city of city manager to enter into an agreement with the Mexico Area Chamber of Commerce to assist in marketing activities for the city of Mexico. I move for passage of Bill 2020-64. Second. Haig. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, bill number 2020-65, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a lease agreement with the St. Brendan Cemetery Association. Mr. Slater. Yes, Your Honor, this is actually a renewal of a lease with St. Brennan's uh, for the uh, uh, ball field uh, out by the uh, cemetery. To cover the details of the lease, Chad Shoemaker. Good evening. Um, as the letter says, uh, the attached resolution authorizes the city manager to execute a lease agreement with St. Brennan Cemetery Association. Uh, this is for the uh, area that uh, City Field 1 and City Field 2 out on uh, West Liberty uh, use. Um, we have had a lease for this property for a long period of time. Um, it's just time to renew it. We do have an MOU currently with the um, Mexico Sports Authority for uh, some use of that facility. So. Um, um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I thought 
I mean, we've been saying for years we weren't going to do this, continue to do this, so I don't know. So after the after the sports authority approached us and we put the MOU together last year, which council you know saw last year, kind of put us in a position where another 10 years was probably what we need to do at this point. Um, also, when we decide to undo this for sure, um, we are going to have to budget for putting that site back to original because the buildings will have to go, the poles will have to go, all the lighting will have to come down, all that. Right. So it's something we'll have to plan for doing when we do do it. So are you looking to spend money on the field? Or no, the sports authority is going to take over some of that um, maintenance if they can find uses where they can sign up kids to uh, not compete with Optimus, but to do like other tournaments, maybe do some adult sports, you know, some things like that. Um, um, and uh, uh, quite frankly, if they can pull that off, we'd be happy to see it in the community, give some people some other opportunities to do some things that aren't offered now at basically no cost to the city. I move for reading bill number 2020-65. Second. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Bill number 2020-65, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a lease agreement with the St. Brandon Cemetery Association. I move for passage of bill number 2020-65. Hay. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, ordinances, two readings, two readings by title only in passage, bill number 2020-66, an ordinance authorizing the city of Mexico, Missouri to enter into a lease purchase transaction to finance certain capital improvements and authorizing the execution of certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Mr. Slater. Yeah, sure. As council remembers, uh, we moved forward with the uh, pool project. And uh, the pool project itself uh, was to be financed uh, in, um, in three parts. Uh, the first being cash that the city had on hand, and then the other two parts, one being from uh, park funds and grants and donations, and then the third part of that being the use tax. And as we said from the beginning, those second and third parts, we would need to borrow a certain portion of that and that those payments would uh, come in over the next uh, 10 years to make that possible. And uh, so we have now uh, prepared the uh, financing portion of this and to cover the details, uh, Roger Hanks. Actually, I will not have much more to cover. <laughs> Council did approve uh, the city to finance approximately $2.6 million for this fairgrounds pool improvement project, uh, which had an estimated cost of $3.76 million, uh, with the difference between those two being uh, uh, grants and, of course, cash available through the capital projects fund. In regards to the financing, uh, Piper Sandler & Company, as the City of Mexico's financial advisor, sent out a request for terms to local banks to receive financing proposals for a fixed rate 10 year term and we did receive five financing proposals and a summary of those responses uh, is attached uh, the rates varied from 1.65 percent to 1.98 percent basically all within a third of one percent of each other based on a thorough review of these proposals the city finds and determines that it is advantageous and in the best interest of the city to enter into a financing <coughs> of the fairgrounds pool improvement project with First State Community Bank. They offered a lease purchase agreement transaction at a 10-year fixed rate at 1.65% with SEMA annual payments beginning on August 1st, 2021 and ending on February 1, 2031. The bank also proposed a six-month drawdown option for which interest would accrue only on the amount spent and drawn down. The city has determined since then that a lesser amount is needed to be financed and therefore has reduced the financing request to $2.385 million. Staff recommends that council proceed with two readings by title only and passage of the attached ordinance authorizing the City of Mexico to enter into a fairgrounds pool project lease purchase agreement with First State Community Bank in the amount of $2,385,000. The ordinance has been posted the required length of time. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Why was the loan amount adjusted? We were anticipating having some additional grant funds and so on. And one of the things that we will be receiving, and we've received confirmation on, is CARES funding from okay. the county. 
Ready? I move for a reading of bill number 2020-66. Second. <coughs> Second. Kay? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Bill number 2020-66, an ordinance authorizing the city manager, uh, the city of Mexico, Missouri, to enter into a lease purchase transaction to finance certain capital improvements and authorizing the execution of certain documents and actions in connection therewith. I move for the second reading of Bill 2020-66. Second. A? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Bill 2020-66, an, an ordinance authorizing the City of Mexico, Missouri to enter into a lease purchase transaction to finance certain capital improvements and authorizing the execution of certain documents and actions in connection therewith. I move for passage of Bill 2020-66. Second. Hey. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Now we're ready for the plans. I make a motion to pay the bills. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay, now for council comments. Mr. Hay. Start off, nothing. Uh, Nothing too exciting. I see that uh, they got rolling on the, the basketball court, Garfield. I haven't been by lately. I, I hope the snow didn't slow them down too much. I think they're. Uh, but did they get anything poured? I know they were that working. Asphalt did not get down. Yeah. So, but they were moving along. So it's good. To see, ready, so. Yeah, it's good to see that and all the um, the uh, handicap. Uh, accessible sidewalk and all that's mm -hmm. down and looks good and so glad that's done but that's about it for me i'll ditto the garfield and um i give the chief a shout out the fire down over by holt street they i just knew that whole place was going to burn to the ground and it didn't <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Um, Halloween's coming up this weekend. Um, I hope everybody uh, is safe out there this weekend. And then the last thing that I want to say is um, it dawned on me today that the next time we meet will be after the presidential elections. And um, I just, this election is, is, I'm praying for peace and calmness afterwards because um, in my opinion, this election is a blight on both parties um, and a media that seems to want to deal in hate. I've never seen so much hate among so many people in my entire life. Um, and it just made me realize, you know, the two-party system, John Adams and George Washington both were against the two-party system and both said that it was, for example, John Adams said, to be dreaded is the greatest political evil under our Constitution. Um, and I think anybody that watches and sees what's going on in our country today, I think it's, I think we're there. Um, I can't believe that we're still doing what we're doing today when other countries, a quarter of our size, have moved on from this kind of stuff. So. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'd like to extend uh, my condolences to Steve on the loss of your father. I know the council feels that way. Uh, we kind of went out of town for, for the weekend and it seemed like we had a lot of sadness in town over there. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, condolences to you and your family. Appreciate it. Me? <coughs> well, I'd just like to say that. Uh, I got to go to Thailand's pre-ribbon cutting because I wasn't available before. I got there at 3.30 <laughs> and had a special uh, conference with the, the leader right down here. And, uh, <laughs> it's uh, good for our community to have that operation in force there. That's all I and uh, going back then, congratulations to Tyron for his that for becoming the head coach of the Clippers too. That's a big deal for Mexico. Not this time, Ron. Again, condolences to Steve. Um, did what everyone said about Garfield. I agree. I just pray for peace as um, we go into this election season, and that encourage everybody just to go out and vote. It's our our right. And I have nothing else to say at this point. 
it is our time for our public comments. If there's anyone who is wanting to say something, please state your name and address for the record and keep comments to a maximum of three minutes. Uh, hi, my name is Joshua Price and I live at 116 Mary Street and I was just curious, why don't we say the Pledge of Allegiance before meetings? If the school board does it, why doesn't the city council do it? Amen. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. I've been here 10 years, they weren't doing it when I started, so <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I definitely don't have them against them, but I just don't, never been dead. Never ever brought it up. Yeah, because I, I noticed that when I went to school board meetings and I come here and it's like, why why do they do it here and not here? So, and then Garfield Park, uh, the parking lot, we need to get that done now. That's something. That is the, one of the one things that has the potential to impact and improve racial relations in this community right now. So that's something we need to do now. Uh, the parking lot? Yeah, the parking lot at Garfield Park. How you were coming off Green Boulevard and putting in the parking lot, and then you you were talking about it, and then you backed off of it. Well, actually, the reason they backed off of it is the community had suggested to Chad that is not what they wanted to see at this point. Yeah, but but, but that's the that's what I'm, I'm that's the one thing that can actually help improve relationships within our community and abroad. Again, it was that community it was the community in which you're referring that stated that they would prefer to have the, um, what do you call it right now, the shelter. shelter. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to see um, the basketball court. That was something that was actually a bonus. And actually seeing the sidewalks, uh, the handicap accessible sidewalk actually going to the shelter. That yeah, those, I mean, those that things absolutely needed to get done. And I understand why they wanted those things done. They were, they were actually against having the the ramp or the entrance coming in off the highway for the um, parking lot. So, but I At mean, do, do you see what I'm trying to say though? That mm -hmm. by putting that parking lot in there, then that that can actually improve relations between the people of this community. Well, I think one of the things was um, somebody else was there. well. <clears throat> I don't think anybody in the council was against a parking lot, but when we had a meeting with um, the community uh, around Garfield, um, one of the biggest things that came up was the safety factor of being able mm -hmm. to enter the park quickly and exit it quickly. Um, and it's something that we really didn't think about. And when the community brought it up, um, you know, we just kind of thought about it and they kind of stressed some other things like Dr. Shiver said that they wanted to see improved first before they got in the parking lot. First of all, where do we put the parking lot? Well, yeah, do we absolutely. put it? Do we put it where we wanted it? Do we put it um, further? I guess it would be further north. Um, and so those types of things came up, and I think one of the things that jumped out to me, and I just never thought about it, was just the safety factor that they brought up. And uh, to be honest, the guy made a heck of a point, and. The sad thing is the point was proven almost two months later, mm -hmm. a month or two later. And for now, I just think it's probably, I know it's something that I probably just don't want to touch right now. And it may be something we bring up a little bit later. But as of now, that's what the community wanted over there. And I'll support that community for that. We'll just look at some other improvements. And we've done that with the shelter and the basketball court and just continue to look at it from that standpoint. Because what we do here impacts the world. So really trying to work on relationships and trying to build relationships and, and, and making that a possibility among us is, is something important that we need to work on. Well, and, I, and I think the way that we came about with this in the conversations, um, having Chad go and talk with everyone, um, you know, Councilman Haig and Councilwoman uh, Briggs was also present to listen and to hear from people because, like I said, um, I think they were really pleased with what came out of the meeting right now, and I think we're at a... Uh, I think they understood that we're looking at, you have to look at budgeting, you have, there's so many things that had to do, and they felt that they were heard. We felt that we were heard, because um, sometimes I, still, I feel like I'm part of that community. I grew up there, you know? Um, and it was some, it really, it felt like 
we made a lot of progress with something as might seem as minute to some people, but what was done or is in the process of being done, um, our folks said a lot for the community. And then, uh, could we get an update on the neighborhood bond agreement and that? The what? The, the neighborhood imp uh, bond, improvement bond, that? Had, is there still not sure what you're talking about? The, you're talking about the mid, yeah, the Mid America Brick bond agreement that that we have to pay. Could we get an update on that? I haven't really heard much about that. Part of that's in litigation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you can tell them the status of the current payments. As I, I think we've already said, is that uh, as as we know, the property has changed hands. Mm -hmm. And the person that, or the company that purchased the property did not initially make the payment that, that was due last December. That put the city in a position that had to make that payment. And through litigation, we were able to recapture that payment. Um, however, there is continuing litigation as we move forth with the remainder of that bylaws. And beyond that, I don't know that I can say all So they are paying it now? It, it, all I can say is that to, through litigation, we recaptured the payment that they missed. Okay. And now we're moving forward from here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any else? Anyone else? No. Will we adjourn? Hey. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Adjourned.